Hello everyone, for first updates now, I'm Tyler Olds and you're watching Behind the Bot. It's where we dive deeper into FTC robots and what makes them work. And today I'm here with 16197 Swarm out of Cupertino, California. This team has a 232.5 OPR and some really awesome features we're we'll going to be going over today. Joining me from 16197 is going to be Mabel and Sohome. And we're going to be diving a bit more into uh, a lot of cool custom stuff on this awesome intake. Uh, going into a uh, PTO use for a couple different functions, which I'm really excited to talk about. Of course, odometry and some cool other software all here coming up on Behind the Bot. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker is a leading medical device company and is looking for those in first to join their team as interns or for a great career. Come join a company that will actively support you being in first at careers.stryker.com. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumper segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. So Mabel, you're going to be starting us out here on this robot uh, with the intake on it. It looks like a very wide intake, so I always love hearing what some of the design process is behind that as we go into your transfer and your shooter as well. Right, so we have the first thing that the uh, rings come into contact with on our robot is um, the vertical intake. So um, we found that our vertical intakes can help us a lot with cycle um, speeds and stuff like that. So what we have is that we have it all mounted onto the drop down system right here. And so the way we chose to do that is to use two, um, two sets of 3D printed bevel gears and it transfers power um, into the vertical power. And then that allows us to spin these um, surgical tubing noodles. Um, and what this kind of does is that it knocks the, so the rings will enter through the robot, hit the extrusion. And then it will, and then these um, noodles will kind of knock it over. It will knock the rings down like that. And it sends us into um, the transfer part of our robot. So with the transfer, we just have it run um, by a set of chains and also gears and belts. I'll explain it a bit later. Um, what we have is that we have these custom 3D printed hubs that house these um, noodles that spin on axles on this uh, 3D printed section. What's pretty cool is that um, almost the entire set, uh, almost our entire intake is 3D printed. So these two big blocks down here as well, the bottom rollers um, and also the hubs are 3D printed and designed. Um, and, allows, and it gives a lot of freedom when it comes to um, reiterating, designing, and um, adjustability. So over here, we decided to add two pieces of extrusion. And so um, with these pieces, uh, with, with these shafts, it allows us to move um, these blocks up and down and helps adjust with chain tensions or you know, potentially even the height of the actual rollers and helps us change then the compression of the rings. So um, we also, as I said before, we have a set of chains running down all the way um, across. And down here, we have a set of gears and also belts that help us power the bottom first roller and also the third roller. This helps us really um, accelerate our pickup speeds and stuff like that. Um, and then we also have a top roller up here. Um, and it's the final push that allows for the rings to fall smoothly into the transfer. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, your intake there. So we've seen quite a few different blockers uh, out there before, but I really like the, the concept that you have here where it's pretty much able to just get it right into the intake right away. Can you talk about some of your uh, thought process? Like how did you come up with that idea and design uh, moving forward? Yeah, so it's actually a pretty funny story how we came up with, um, like I guess, like testing and prototyping the kind of the um, surgical tubing aspect of this. So when we first bought the surgical tubing, it was kind of way too flimsy and it didn't move the rings at all. They didn't budge on um, the rings wouldn't be intaken um, by this intake. And so Soma and I are kind of both lazy people and we happened to have like a bag of like cut zip tie ends um, just laying around us and we were just prototyping and thinking about it. And we're just like, why not, you know, why not just put a piece of zip tie into the um, surgical tubing and end up working really well. Oh, well, so it's really able to take that at any angle, huh? That's really, that's really neat. I, I just love how when you, when you're showing off before, it's hard to visualize, but when we saw it just happen there, it's pretty incredible how quickly uh, that's able to knock that ring down and get right into your intake. So well, well done on that. Uh, really looks neat. I, I really do appreciate that. Uh, as we keep moving up on here uh, too, I know we're going to be going a little bit more uh, into the, the shooter itself and then into a turret. So maybe anything to wrap up on your end from that? Yeah. So can you just so this is our shooter. 
Um, we have it on turret which we have it on a turret which so we'll explain later we have two um banebots wheels that we got the hubs are also from banebots as well and we have two uh two and seven eighth inch wheels we also have this big uh steel flywheel up here and it helps us keep up the momentum with our um, shooting speeds and stuff like that and then um over here we run we run them with two uh, red motors as well and so um one of the biggest things that we wanted to do is to allow for a robot to shoot from anywhere in the field, right? And one of the ways that we can let that happen and allow for that to happen is to use this um, linkage flap. So um, yeah, it goes up and down like this and we adjust it depending on how far away we are on um, in respect to the field. And the way we do that is to use odometry, which will again later be explained. But um, in doing so and changing the angle of the flap, we can shoot at a steeper angle or a slightly less steep angle and that allows us to shoot anywhere in the field. So have you found yourself uh, doing that in your, uh, you know, challenges of doing remote events? Do you find yourself shooting at different spots in the field or in remote? Do you typically shoot from one main spot? So mostly in remote, um, we're shooting from generally a similar distance right behind the line. But we do use uh, this flap during the power shots because the power shots are a little lower during the goal. So that's where we found the most um, use for it. But uh, we originally built this uh, planning for in-person tournaments because we had hoped by now we would be able to compete in in-person tournaments. Um, so we've tested this and we're able to shoot from pretty far back behind the line. So uh, so although we have it pretty much at the same angle during remote competitions, it would be very useful during person. No, and, and I like that forward thinking too. I, I would go the same route if I, if I was in that position that you got to hope that at some point maybe you can play uh, this game in person somewhere, right? So uh, regardless if it's an official event or not, hopefully that comes up for you uh, for your team soon enough. So uh, so let's keep going on into the uh, turret itself too. And, and we saw it initialize there, but love to get a little bit uh, deeper dive into what's going on with the turret. Mm -hmm. So our turret is, uh, we modeled it off of a lot of common FRC turrets. So the way we have our turret is we have this one big Delrin plate right here. So this Delrin plate is about six millimeters thick and was machined by a local team who was uh, really great and they were able to machine it pretty quick for us. So um, to support the turret on this plate, we have a stack of bearings. So we have a large bearing, um, we have a tinier bearing, and then we have a larger bearing on the bottom. And then those three bearings kind of sandwich the plate. And on our turret, we have six of those sandwiches or six of those bearing stacks. Um, evenly spaced around our turret. So that allows this turret to kind of be supported. And one of the great things we found about the bearing stack method is that even though our um, shooter is kind of cantilevered off of the center of the turret, like the motors are out um, of the center of the turret, this flywheel is out of the center of the turret, um, this is still able to spin pretty easily just because of the robustness of the uh, bearing stacks. Now, one of the things I want to uh, jump into is uh, using a PTO. Uh, you mentioned uh, for your turret and intake as well, too. Uh, love that if we can show that off, uh, just kind of or talk a little bit more how that process works. Uh, you know, I'm starting to see uh, more teams, more FTC teams utilize PTOs. We've seen PTO used for a long time in FRC, but uh, starting to see it more used in FTC. So excited to hear you speak a little bit more about how that uh, works as well. Yeah, so... Um... When we set out on our season goals for this uh, season, we kind of, um, part of our mission was to build a cool robot and part of our mission was to build a competitive robot. So sometimes the coolness may have overtaken um, like the utility or cost aspect of our robot. But uh, so we decided to build a PTO just because that was something we've always wanted to do. Um, and it really came in handy during the season, uh, less so for remote competitions, um, but with an IRA uh, in-person competition, um, we kind of designed this so we could spin our turret really fast. So if a robot were to slam into our robot or try to play defense on it, we would be able to spin around and react and our turret would have the power of two motors uh, just to stay on target um, and spin really fast. So uh, the actual PTO um, is completely 3D printed. Um, and instead of like a FRC ball shifter type PTO, we went with a kind of uh, differential additive PTO. So we have two motors right here powering this uh, system. So if the motors spin in opposite directions, uh, one uh, our intake spins, and if the motors spin in the same direction, our turret spins. Um, and if they spin in like a kind of ratio, so one's going full speed in one direction and one's going half speed in the direction, it kind of adds and mixes the power together. So we're able to get this cool continuous power spectrum from two motors worth of power on the intake to two motors worth of power. So um, if you can see, um, when I rotate um, just the turret and the intake isn't rotating, you can see how this uh, you can see how this differential box right here moves, and then if Mabel were to rotate the intake um, just by hand, 
you can see how when we rotate the intake, this one is, and then both can spin at the same time. Um, and that kind of allows us to mix up the power of motors and get power where it needs to. That's really cool. It, the, just watching that uh, display on there, the, the thought process that you put into that obviously is, is uh, very well developed. So really neat. Uh, to see on that. Uh, I want to keep moving on this robot here as we have lots to show. Uh, so I, I know uh, we have a wobble goal to cover. Was there anything else on the shooter that you wanted to cover as well too before we go into the wobble goal mechanism? Um, yeah, this is kind of related to our hopper um, transfer system. But one of the things that we found really improved accuracy on our turret was adding a platform that raised the rings to the exact angle of our shooter. Um, so uh, how that works is that as this platform goes up and down, um, we are able to uh, rotate this platform right here. So this just, uh, there's a servo under there that rotates the platform that actually raises our up and down. So when they start at the bottom, um, our platform faces our intake, allowing the rings to drop onto the platform smoothly. Then when our linkage raises uh, the rings up, um, it's able to rotate and match the angle of our shooter. So as our shooter rotates around, uh, the tilting platform uh, matches the So if Mabel were to hold up, intake i can kind of demonstrate so as the if the turret were to move here um this platform would actually spin to match the turret which we can show later is that done in programming or is that purely mechanical like can you can talk a little more how that how that meshing process works on there yeah so the way the meshing process works is that as part of our power takeoff we have a rev encoder right here um located on uh uh the pulley that drives our turret so um, we track the rotation of our turret and the exact angle, and then using software, we just uh, basically rotate the servo that controls this platform um, to the right angle to match up with. Really cool. Uh, let's talk about your wobble goal mechanism, and then we're going to be uh, wrapping up a little bit more with your odometry and a little bit more with software. But show us what we got for the wobble goal. Yeah. So our wobble goal is pretty simple. It's um, we have a claw system. So what happens is, um, so this just rotates down, um, up and down to pick up the wobble goal or grab it or get out of the way when we're fully off. And then over here, we have these 3D printed arms and 3D printed gears that just open and close these arms. And we have our servo back uh, dri driving these by belt. Um, so one of the considerations for building our uh, wobble goal like this with the belt uh, was that, um, one reason is we wanted the servo closer to the fulcrum, um, just so the wobble uh, gold servo didn't have as much to lift up. And another consideration was that um, we've heard of teams breaking their claws um, if they direct drive them or things like that. So having this belt in the way adds a little bit of springiness to our wobble goal mechanism that just takes a bit of the load off the servo and gives this uh, minute amount of compliance that was really useful. Yeah, so this is our wobble goal mechanism. Um, it allows us to pick up the wobble goal pretty easily. Uh, we have a servo down here that just drives these arms with the belt, and we have some uh, 3D printed gears on these arms that just uh, keep the arms synced up. So one of the considerations and reasons we used a belt was so we could get the server, servo closer to the fulcrum um, of the wobble arm, just so there's less load for the servo to pick up. Another reason we added the belt was for a bit of compliance. So when this uh, grabs the wobble goal, we have a bit of springiness from the belt. Um, so that allows us just to get a bit more grip on the wobble goal without damaging this. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's a very effective. Something we've seen on, amongst a lot of great teams is that their wobble goal mechanism just tends to be effective but simple at the same standpoint. I think you've accomplished that uh, pretty well on here. So a couple more things to cover on this. Uh, we're going to be heading back over to Mabel's and we'll be talking about uh, a little bit more about your drive, specifically your odometry uh, that's going on with that. And then we'll go back over to someone and talk about software. Yeah, of course. So can you flip it over? Yeah. So this year we got these new Gobilda wheels and they are, um, we found that they were better than the ones we used last year, which are the older versions, because these are made of, these are made of a rubber that is slightly um, softer and that allows us to really go for quick accelerations and um, allows us to tune our paths really easily as well. So we have a 16.1 to one ratio on our drivetrain um, and, and we also use um, 3D printed uh, pulleys and also these six millimeter wide belts um, on our drivetrain. We also, yeah. And then these, this is our odometry module. We decided to go for, um, so last year what happened is that we had really flimsy, I guess, odometry and it ended up tracking incorrectly. And there's a lot of inconsistencies when it came with um, software side and it became really infuriating. So this year we went for a metal odometry between our two parallel plates. 
Um, and so we use six, uh, 56 millimeter wheels, um, Omni wheels for this, as well as a um, rev encoder. Um, and the geometry pod um, allows for us to do really uh, pretty good uh, path planning and stuff with Roadrunner. Yeah. So one one great thing that, that one great thing about our odometry is that it allows us to track pretty consistently for the entire match. So throughout the match, we're able to use our odometry to automatically aim and fire. Well, one six one nine seven swarm once again coming off from Cupertino, California. Thanks you so much for uh, taking the time to speak to us about your robot. Uh, a lot of cool stuff going on for that. So really neat to see uh, what you have going on there. So uh, of course, can't wait to see your robot uh, compete. Uh, either I don't know if we're going to get to see it this season, but if not, definitely future seasons well. So thanks a lot for taking the time. Yeah, thank you for having us, Tyler. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with the company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUND by joining FUND Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.